Time for a history lesson. Hi everyone, welcome back to another Scotty Karate video. Today we're going to be going over some history. This is going to be part one of a four-part series I'm going to be doing, and it's going to be going over the 20 principles of Funakoshi. Let's get into it. If you don't know who Funakoshi is, he is the originator or creator of Shotokan Karate. It's one of the largest karate systems in the world. So with that, he decided to make these principles in this way taught. So we have today the 20 principles of Funakoshi. In this series, we're going to be going over the 20 principles of Funakoshi, what they are, and what they could possibly mean. Now, these are interpretations, so understand that when I give you my version or what I think they could be or translate to in today's modern age, that doesn't mean that's what it is. It's just my opinion what I think it could be. All of these, I would still like to hear from you in the comments below what you think they are or what they mean to you. With that, let's get on with our first principle. The first one is Karate Do begins and ends with Rei. Well, what does that mean? Well, to break it down, Rei in martial arts usually means respect or courtesy. We kind of use it in karate as kind of a prompt, I'll say, as to bow. So you'll say, like, say you're speaking to your sensei or you're starting your class and it'd be like, sensei ni Rei. Rei is when you bow. Well, that's the symbolization of the courtesy or respect. So Karate Do begins and ends with Rei. So it begins and ends with respect. Now, what could that be? That could be a lot of different things to a lot of different people. To me, I bring that into my real life because I want to show my elders, my senpais, as it were, the respect that they've earned, right? We don't want to go into it and be disrespectful. We want to try and bring that mentality, that courtesy to the real world. So that's what that means to me. Not just necessarily in the dojo, but it does translate to real life. And I need to be respectful to other people, just like I would my senseis in the dojo. Second up, there is no first strike in karate. Strike first, strike hard, no mercy, sir! Eh, okay. Now, here's the thing. <laughs> there is no first strike in karate. The purpose of this is probably to teach that it's for self-defense. It's not a art to go out and start issues, conflicts, problems. Meant to be used to defense, right? Defense of the weak and so on. Literal, there is no first strike in karate. It depends on your version of first strike. Okay? So, it depends on a legal term, right? If someone initiates a fight and they're coming in and they start swinging at you, well, they don't have to strike you first before you are legal to fight back. So, as soon as they posture up like they're going to strike, the fight has already begun. So if you get in because you're more trained, you technically struck first. But did you strike first? More philosophical. But, little translation, there is no first strike in karate. Something to think about? Let me know what you think. Leading right into our third one, karate is an aid to justice. Strictly speaking, right on black and white paper, sounds pretty obvious. You want to use your karate to help, not hinder, right? So, what does that mean for our today's day and age, right? We don't walk around with samurais. We're not pulling up, you know, honor codes. We're not doing that. How does it help justice? Well, for example, if you're a police officer, you're in the military, all these things, you've had some kind of combatives training, more military than police, but you have this, right? Well, you're not taught it because they want bullies to go out and bully citizens. You're taught this to defend yourself and defend those who can't defend themselves. You have to be on the side of justice. So that is a great principle. It's one of those that makes you really think, go, hmm, am I living my life right? The fourth principle, know yourself, then know others. You know what that means? It's Latin. It means know thyself. Know thyself! What does that actually mean? Well, the way is wrote, you should know yourself before you know your opponents or know other people. And this is very true because if you don't know what makes you tick, what makes you mad, upset, you know, love, hate, all that, how are you supposed to put any kind of thought into what other people think of those, right? So you need to know yourself, know your limitations, know what you can, can't do, know what gets you upset, gets you mad, 
All these things come back into it. Karate is only effective if you stay calm. Real life scenario, if you start getting into an altercation, but you can keep your mind right and not engage that fight or not escalate the fight as more to the point, you will be able to win easier. You're able to stay calm, keep your cool head. You don't block out and just start swinging. These are all things you need to look at. Know yourself first, then know other people. Our last principle for the day is going to be spirit first, technique second. So what does this mean? What did Funakushi mean when he decided to teach his students this? Does he literally mean that you use your spirit to build a big spirit chi ball and attack your opponent? The rivers, the trees, the wind, all the living things in nature. Please offer me your energy. I ask of you, please. Mm, maybe not. But maybe he wasn't talking about a spiritual, like religious spirit, but just your spirit, your intensity, your level, your development, you being you, right? Putting in the effort. So your spirit. So if you go into anything and you don't really care, it's not going to have a great outcome. But if you're passionate about something and you put everything you have into it, usually good things happen. This is a similar thing. This is the way I see it. So if I'm in combat, right, somebody's attacking me, and I look at the battle or the fight like, eh, oh well. Well, odds are I'm going to lose because I'm not putting anything in. You have to put that in. Just like your training, you have to put that into it. If you don't put it into training, you won't get it out in the fight. It's just how it is. So that's what I think of these principles. These five are great. They're a great start to our list. What about you? What do you think about each one? Please let me know in the comments below what you interpret them as, or if you think they're still valid, because that's a, something you might think about too, because these were wrote a very long time ago. I mean, the man lived over a hundred years ago, so maybe they're not valid anymore. That could be legit. Let me know. If you liked the video, please like, comment, subscribe, and don't forget to hit that notification bell in the corner so you know when my videos are posted each week. And as always, the more you train, easier the fight.